Today's episode will be step three in the recipe for a heart healthy divorce, compartmentalize time. But before we go into that, let me just recap the first two steps. In recipe for a heart healthy divorce or strategy for a heart healthy divorce, whichever way you want to look at it, there are two steps that precede compartmentalizing time. The first step and the most essential step, the step that if you do nothing else will be the step that makes the divorce process more amicable, less litigious, and more of a hard and less of a hardship on your life. And that first step is settle the emotional divorce before you file for the legal divorce. Take the time that you need to grieve. People don't do this. When people initially decide that they're going to get divorced, quite often in anger, one of them just starts filing. And it's the wrong way to do it. Filing for divorce is not going to get rid of the anger, get rid of the hurt. In fact, it's going to exacerbate the process you need in order to go into divorce with a clear mind and a calm heart. You absolutely have to go through the grieving stages. You know, when people die, we take a little time off of work and this factors into compartmentalizing time. We take time off to grieve and people understand that when somebody's died, you're going to grieve. But most people don't understand that the death of death of a marriage also requires grieving. And that's what's involved in settling the emotional divorce, because that is a divorce. The separation of spouses from being married with all of with all that that entails to being divorced with all that that entails, not only the process of it, but the aftermath of it. More than likely, most people are going to live as single people for a while, unless another relationship has developed and that's the reason why the divorce is taking place. Okay, so that's a different story, but one of the spouses may uh, uh, have to live separately as a single parent or just a single person that time, that step is essential. So that was the first two weeks ago we talked about that. Settle the emotional divorce, get straight on the healing process, the forgiveness, the acceptance, and then go into the filing. And then the second step that we talked about last week, communication for conflict. So yes, you are going to have to learn a different communication style when you're going into divorce, especially if you're married to somebody who is a bully, who puts you down, who's narcissistic, you're going to have to learn communication skills for conflict. And if you have to hire attorneys because there's no way you can both talk, the attorney hired by the high conflict spouse is going to be a high conflict attorney, like seeks like. You have to get ready with the attorney that you choose to be able to have the communication skills necessary. And you, if you have to hire attorneys, have to know how to talk to your attorney. You have to know how to control the communication process, not only for yourself, but you want to control how your attorney talks too if you haven't hired the right attorney to be able to smooth the way in how the communication goes forward. And I am telling you that it only takes one person to address communication differently in order to change the trajectory of the communication and the divorce process. It only takes one person. But when two people engage in a different communication process that calms things down, that doesn't exacerbate the conflict, you've got a good divorce. You've got a great divorce in that it will teach you things. It will provide skills for you that you can use in other challenging situations. That's what divorce can do for you if approached properly. Because if the truth be told, we divorce ourselves 
from situations all the time. We leave our jobs because they don't feed us, nourish us properly. We, we may even leave family members because they don't feed us and nourish us properly and enable us to have good relationships with them. So, and, and then quite simply, if we um, are a customer of services or products that don't work out, we have to know how to talk to customer relations people, customer, customer services people, so that we can have a productive conclusion to uh, buying a product or service that has failed us. So these are great skills to use, not only for divorce, but going forward in other aspects of our life. Now, today, we're going to talk about compartmentalizing time. People feel out of control when a divorce is filed for. And we should. It's a whole different ball game. When we are ready to file for divorce, we don't know what's what's in front of us. So there's a lot of fear involved. We're bringing people into our lives, divorce professionals whom we do not know. And we have to manage our relationships with them along with managing our relationships with our soon to be former spouse. And if we have minor children, managing those relationships too. So yes, it is normal to feel out of control of our lives, of our time, of everything in our lives when we file for divorce. So don't feel that there's anything weird going on with you. What you're going through, if you feel out of control, perfectly normal. I'm going to show you how to get control back in your life by this essential step called compartmentalizing time. So people need to know how to incorporate the work that is required of them in the filing process and in the decision-making process. Compartmentalizing time is the way to deal with divorce if you absolutely have to work. Now, let me stop there. Wouldn't it be great and maybe you have the luxurious position of not having to work while you're dealing with divorce, that would be ultimate. If you don't have to work, well, both you and your spouse, if you both don't have to work while the divorce is going on, you're able to focus on divorce. You're able to get through all of the steps necessary so that the paperwork can go through smoothly. And if this is a contentious divorce, and I'm so sorry if it is, but if this is a contentious divorce, it will at least allow you to focus on these four steps that I'm providing to you, going through the grieving stage in order to settle the emotional divorce, learning communication skills so that you can get through conflict and not exacerbate it, and then using your time to focus on dealing with the process of divorce in the best way possible. Okay, so most of us don't have that. But if we do have that, it's really great to just clear the decks, deal with divorce, and then start dealing with a new life after divorce. But if you're like most of us, we have to work. We don't have the resources to be able to live on savings and still have a lot of savings left. So we're going to have to work while we're dealing with divorce. And I want to show you how to compartmentalize time so that you can focus on work when you have to work. Focus on the children if you have children because they have school if they're in school, they have school, they have after school activities, they have play dates with their friends, they have field trips, they want to go to the movies. So you have a lot on your plate when you have children. If you don't have children, great, then you have a little more time to focus on divorce. Don't badmouth divorce, focus on getting through it in the right way. We are a culture of people who multitask. And that's the worst way to approach divorce. You have to be able to create the space 
four divorce decisions, four divorce paperwork, four depositions, four hearings, four mediations, four meetings, you have to be able to create the space for that. You cannot multitask divorce into your work, into dealing with the children. You can't be on your cell phone talking to divorce professionals when you're at the soccer game. No, you need to be engaged in your child's soccer game. Uh, when you're at the parent-teacher meeting at school, you can't be worrying about the deposition you have to go to later. Don't go to a deposition on the day you have a parent-teacher's meeting. You have to really understand that multitasking is the worst thing you can do. And I learned this from a client of mine. A couple of years ago, I'm on the phone with somebody. Now, I obviously, like other divorce professionals, I file, I mediate. I make my phone calls and create emails and do all of my work during the day. That's when I work. But one day I was talking to a client on the phone and she was sharing with me how stressed out she was. And she was at work. How stressed out she was dealing with the disclosure forms. I mean, that's most of the paperwork that has to be done in an amicable divorce, the kind that I take care of. But in any contentious divorce, you're going to have the disclosure forms, which are the, the roadmap and the path for settlement, asset and debt settlements, and then child support, spousal support, alimony. You have your financial statements that deal for that, deal with that. Well, you are the only ones that can put those together. Your attorneys don't know what you have and don't have. I don't know what you have and don't have. No other divorce mediator or divorce coach knows any of that. So yes, there is paperwork that you have to do. Don't do it while you're at your job. Don't compromise your work effort. Actually make your job the focus of the time you're there and get away from divorce. You don't have to do both things at the same time. So I said to my client when she was stressing over it, I said, you know what? I am the cause of your stress because I have not until today thought about, wait a minute, maybe we need to reorganize this for you. Maybe we need to talk about the time you have available to respond to my emails, my phone calls, and to respond to any paperwork that you have to do. So let's talk about it now. When do you have uninterrupted time that you can sit and focus on this? And we talked about it. And from that day forward, I started talking about this with all of my clients. I do not want you to include divorce paperwork at your job. I don't want you to jeopardize yourself. I don't want your managers to become upset with you and to think of reasons to dock you. Don't put yourself in harm's way like that. No, look at the time available that is not taken up with work or with your children. That's what you need to do, or if with any volunteer activities that you may have. Number four, choose divorce professionals who understand and support the separation of your daily lives from your divorce life. Hire divorce professionals who understand that. So you have to have a conversation. Like I advance the conversation with my client. You have to advance the conversation with anybody that you hire. And if you live in a different state, I obviously cannot file for you. If you live in a different state, I can mediate for you, but different ball game. You're going to hire people who are close to you, geographically close to you. Most people do that, and you should. You need access to them in your own time zone quickly. So have a talk with them. Advance the conversation that you want to be clear headed and make decisions with a calm heart. You do not want to respond to their emails and texts and do the divorce work, go to depositions if you don't have to during your work time. Now, everybody has a different schedule for work time. Nurses have a couple days off, weekdays off. So if you're a medical professional, even doctors, sometimes take Wednesdays off to golf 
still in this day and age, they do. So look at the time that you have during the work week that you can give to your divorce professionals, your attorneys, your paralegals, your mediators, your divorce coaches, and the court, if you need hearings, look at those days off during the week that you can assign to that work. And if you have to work Monday through Friday, nine to five, well, you have after work, before work, and you have weekends. So to do the paperwork, return the emails and the phone calls, you can use those times to do that. Now, what if you have a contentious divorce? Yes, we're going to try and turn it around. Absolutely. But while we're trying to turn it around, you may have depositions, hearings, you may have hearings for emergency spousal support and alimony, emergency child support. You may have depositions. You may have hearings for that. Well, look at the personal time that you have that you can take at work. In order to do that, I really think you need to talk to your human resources department and let them know you're going through a divorce. Let them know that you do not want to do divorce work on the job. You really want to use your job as your get out of divorce free time, your respite from divorce. And that is your intention. But let them also know that you might have to use personal time. And if you don't have a human resource department and you have a manager or if it's a small business and you have an employer, have a talk with them. Let them know what's going on. First of all, they're going to be empathetic, especially if these, they've been through divorce. They're going to understand what it takes. But to hear you advance the conversation that you want to give your full focus to work when you're at work they will love you more than you know. And they will so appreciate that you've thought about this and want to let them know that this is your intention and this is what you're going to work towards. Don't try and hide that you're going through divorce. Only tell your coworkers and let your managers, employer or human resources find out secondhand. Advance it yourself. It is the responsible thing to do, and it will work in your best interest. Do not fear that you're going to get fired because you're going through divorce. I, I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, let me know if you have a company that you work for where that fear is justified because that may be the wrong company for you to be working with. You know, think about it. Do you really want to work with people that don't take a family attitude, that we are one giant family? And if you have personal things going on that require a little bit of daytime assignment, work time assignment to deal with, um, take personal time, organize that with them, that that's going to be personal time. Maybe it's even a little vacation time. I don't know. But that is a responsible thing to do. And then do it. You know, don't try and sneak in divorce work. Um, I just wanted to do this one little thing or use the copier. Oh my gosh, this is the biggest issue. Using the copier. Do not use the work copier for your divorce stuff. Why? Well, there's a trace of what, where you send your uh, faxes, e uh, emails, and, and scans. You don't want that to happen. And don't use your work email address for divorce. Get a personal address if you don't have one. We all have personal addresses. But go to an office store, uh, one of these mail center places, you know, where people have mailboxes. They have the ability to scan an email for you. Use them. Don't use work to do that. You know, all of us in the divorce business, sometimes we tend to forget that you don't have office equipment at home, like we have office equipment with us. We tend to forget that. So first of all, tell us, you know, how you're set up to be able to communicate with us in scans and then go to a public place to do it. And then ask them to, um, ask them to erase everything that they've just emailed or scanned 
for you, not emailed, but scanned, copied and scanned for you. And they will do it. But yes, have these conversations with all the professionals in your life, the divorce professionals and the work professionals, and work together with this team of people who, if you imbue them with the um, the respect and the authority to be helpful to you, everybody will rise to the occasion if they are the right people in your life. And again, if they're not the right people in your life, move on because divorce is a game changer for every single thing in your life. It's a game changer for the way you choose your next relationship. It's a game changer to let you self-reflect on what your part in the divorce might have been. It's your opportunity to change anything in your life that may have needed changing and divorce just is that one uh, event that causes you to move your life around because divorce can be a new beginning. As much as we hate the idea of divorce, if you use it properly, it, it can create a new beginning for you and, and an opportunity to form the life you've wanted to have, but couldn't because you made this decision to get married. Maybe you knew from the beginning it wasn't the right decision and just did it anyway, or at some point in time realized that this marriage wasn't advancing your life in any way and satisfying you properly. So divorce can be the best, worst thing that's ever happened to you and use it appropriately. But then once you tell your divorce team that you're going to do things at a certain time frame, you actually have to follow through. And if you follow through, that will build the courage that you need to be able to take control of your life and control of your schedule. Do not be a people pleaser. Do not think that doing things on everybody else's time frame is the right thing to do. It's not. You need to communicate what's right for you. And compartmentalizing time is the right way to do it. Now think about this. Think about during the pandemic. Oh my God, uh, we had to work from home. That's the scene of the crumbling marriage. People that had just had the divorce talk when the stay-at-home orders were created in the states that had them, the stay-at-home orders were huge to deal with. Now, if you had children, you had to homeschool them or you had to manage their online school process. You had your own work to do. You had to figure out how to work from home. Uh, if you had the divorce talk at the beginning of the pandemic, were you able to separate bedrooms? And where is your alone time? And those of you, by the way, who are still living together because financially you have to, where is your alone time? You have to compartmentalize time so that you have alone time. That's so important. You know, just having separate bed bedrooms doesn't do the trick. You have to be able to, even if you have to leave the house, you need downtime. You need processing time by yourself. It's way too difficult to work through the grief stages in the same house. And the grief stages, as we talked about two weeks ago, are not linear. And both spouses go through them at different times, at different rates of speed. So get ready for that as well. And you kind of have to work together on this. Okay. Um, so the operative word in compartmentalizing time is focus. Uh, you need to compartmentalize time so that your focus is where it needs to be when you're dealing with divorce decisions. That was number four. Number five, put a schedule together that allows you to work without interruption, that gives you valuable time with your children and all of the activities in their lives, and that provides for exercise and alone time. Okay. This putting the schedule together is really super important. So how do we do that? Well, I say put your work schedule first. I mean, you have to go to work every day. You have to earn a living. So define in, in, a, in a calendar and not 
Well, you know, I'm a big fan of using paper and pencil. I know people have really gone to the schedules on their phones. And if you're conversant with that, okay, use your phones. But put a calendar together. Look at a calendar. And if you work nine to five, Monday through Friday, then put nine to five work. Whatever your work schedule is, that goes first. The second thing, the schedule of your children. When do you have to uh, get them up? When do you have to feed them? When do you have to take them to work or to school? Sorry about that. When do you have to take them to school? Pick them up. When are their activities? All of that goes into the schedule next. Well, you are used to doing that, but look at it on paper now. Because looking at it on paper will then show you where those other times are that you can do your divorce work. And then be ready to adjust if you have to adjust a little bit. But stick to it. I am telling you, when you see this schedule in front of you and you literally see where you're placing the divorce work, that should in and of itself calm you down. The thing that makes us anxious is that we haven't compartmentalized time and assigned a time during the weekday and during the weekend for divorce work. That's what that's what really creates the the nervous energy, the anxiety, and that's what makes us sick. That stress, that constant stress. So don't stress out. Look at that schedule, put that schedule down. Divorce is the third component that goes onto the that overall schedule and then stick to it. And with that commitment, when you give that schedule to your divorce professionals, when you adhere to that schedule, I am telling you that you can block everything out during work because you know when you're going to get to the divorce stuff. And you won't feel guilty that you're not spending the time with your children that you need to spend with them. Oh my gosh, you know, I want to focus on my children, but you know, I have to do these disclosures. I know I have the deposition coming up. Stop it. Stop it, stop it, stop it. You don't have to live like that. You know that you have assigned time for divorce, emails, phone calls, and paperwork. And now you also know that you've gone to your manager or the business owner and or the human resources department. You've already had the talk with them. You've let them know that your fo your focus on work is going to be during work time and you're not going to put divorce in work time. They will so appreciate that. And I bet they will see a change in you. They will see you calm down, especially if they've seen you start the divorce and go nuts. And with this new way of approaching divorce, they have seen you calm down, they're going to really, they're going to really appreciate this. And you're not going to have to worry about getting fired, which is in the back of people's minds. You know, is this going to be too much for my employer? Number six, the only fly in the ointment of your well-crafted schedule will be hearings, depositions, a few meetings with those filing for you in mediations. Well, the court isn't opened on weekends. So if you have any court hearings, you're going to have to do that during the week. And you're just going to have to accept the fact that everybody has personal time on their jobs. Everybody has vacation time. The, the divorce isn't going to last the rest of your natural life. The divorce does have a shelf life. Hopefully it's sooner rather than later. And so just bite the bullet agree to use some personal time, maybe some vacation time to go to depositions, hearings, mediations, and meetings. And then it'll be all over at a certain point in time. It'll be okay. Number seven, lastly, do not respond to angry texts and emails from your spouse during work or during family time. This can be done during divorce time. Now, we already uh, tackled in uh, learning communication skills for conflict that you wait 24 hours anyway when someone's going to send you an angry text or email. You don't respond same day. That is your secret power, not responding same day. 
Nobody expects somebody to receive an angry text or email and let it go for a while. Nobody expects it. In fact, the natural response from the perpetrator of the angry text or email is a follow-up. Hey, did you get my text or email? You don't even have to respond to that. You just let it go. And then 24 hours later say, yes, I did, but I needed time to think. Here is my response. And then you'll use what the BIF method that we talked about. Yes, we will. Brief, informative, friendly, and firm. You will not engage in an argument. You will respond in a way that mitigates and neutralizes all of the hostility that was just thrown at you. And you will feel so on top of your game when you do that. But this thing about fielding and reading angry texts and emails from your spouse or opposing counselor, if you're representing yourself and your spouse is not representing themselves, it's, it's just wrong. You don't have to do it. You just don't have to do it. Nobody is, um, nobody's required. First of all, nobody's required to respond to anything untoward, by the way. You can require better communication. As a matter of fact, if somebody speaks to you in an untoward way, 24 hours later, when you respond, you're just going to say, if you could please rephrase this so it's more respectful, I would be happy to respond. I love doing communication work. It's my favorite thing to do because communication work gives you control and compartmentalizing time supports that control. So when this whole thing starts that you've decided to compartmentalize time, I suggest getting an email address that doesn't come to your phone, that only goes to your home computer. That is a brilliant thing to do. Nobody's thought about that but me yet, I think. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm happy to contribute new thoughts, but... I would say if you are involved in an acrimonious situation, I would get an email address, a personal email address that you're just going to use for divorce that only goes to your home computer so that you're not even tempted to respond to an angry email. Texts, I don't know. I mean, people don't have separate phones. So, um, can you block texts? Would that be comfortable? Can you block your spouse's phone number from your text and only allow the emails to come through? And, and if you don't have children, you could easily say, um, I'm so sorry, but the only way I want to communicate is through email. And I have a certain time of day or of the week that I do divorce emails. And that's when I'm going to respond to you. Compartmentalize time with that. You're allowed to do all of these things. And once somebody sees you gaining control over your time and not taking shit, they will start respecting you more than you know. And when I say not taking shit, I mean, don't talk shitty to them. Talk respectfully to them. It doesn't matter how they sound. You talk respectfully. That is a game changer. And I, I said, I think last week that in one of Bill Eddy's books, the inventor of the Biff method, brief, informative, friendly, and firm, he uh, fielded a letter from a client or, or somebody who read his books and said she, she followed his formula to the T. And as she was signing the divorce paperwork with her now to be former spouse, he turned to her and said, I am so sorry for the way I spoke to you. I can't believe the way you handled yourself. You taught me a lesson. I mean, that was magnificent. That is what you want to have happen. You want to be the guide. You want to be the leader in better communication. And when you compartmentalize time and only communicate in the time assigned for divorce, your head is clearer. Your heart is clearer. You are more in control of your feelings. You're more in control of your thinking. And only then 
can you really put together an exceptional response email that nails your message in a positive way that can really turn the trajectory of your divorce around. Compartmentalizing time will give you a better life quality during divorce. You will have developed a skill that can be used in any conflict. Part of this is mindfulness and part of this is simply scheduling. Have the confidence and the courage to take charge of your time by compartmentalizing it. So that's it. That's my message for today. I hope this helped all of you listening. You know you can call me. You know I do coaching on this. I'd be happy to do that. But if you just take this message and use every piece of it the way I just taught you, I expect an email from you saying, oh my gosh, it works. This turned my life around. I expect those emails from you. So thank you very much for listening. You can always reach me through my website, theamicabledivorceexpert.com or a speaker pipe. Uh, or if you're in California, especially if you're in Southern California, just call me at my office. Go to my website, divorceresourceinc.com, divorceresourceinc.com. Uh, easy ways to get in touch with me. And as always... Have an amicable day.